Hello, everybody. This is Brother Shane McCann, Oasis Ministries. And uh, first thing, I just want to tell everybody, you know, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you. But uh, today, I just want to talk about the birth of Christ. You know, we've been preaching about it the uh, last couple of weeks, uh, me and Anthony both. And uh, uh, just want to read a few scriptures, you know. Uh, the Bible says, faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more that we can get these scriptures in us, the more it will build our faith. And uh, I like reading Isaiah 7, uh, 14 and, and Isaiah 9, 6. And we'll read some of these and uh, read some of the Word tonight. It said, therefore, uh, Isaiah 7, 14, it said, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted uh, uh, God with us. In Isaiah 9, 6, it said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Today when I was uh, in, in, in my truck, the Lord led me to these scriptures. It's found in Matthew uh, 1, 18, and we're going to read here a little bit. It said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise when, as his mother Mary was in spouse to Joseph, therefore they came together, and she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. I like that. I mean, that, that really stuck out to me today, the child of the Holy Ghost. And it said, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and uh, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. You know, and that goes all the way back to Luke one thirty five, where it says, you know, that the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, uh, talking about Mary, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee, and that thing that shall be born in thee shall be holy, and it shall be called the Son of God. For his name shall be Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. You know, the more that we get this in, especially around uh, Christmas time, you know, the more it builds our faith, you know, it brings, uh, it brings comfort to us. And uh, anyway, it, it, we've been talking about the Holy Ghost. You know, none of this could have happened without the Holy Ghost. In 21, it says, She shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, Emmanuel, and he shall save his people from their sins. Talking about the nation of Israel, you know. See, the nation of Israel, they, they have been blinded for uh, a very long time. But, you know, one day uh, the church is going to leave. It's called the uh, uh, the, some people call it rapture, but I call it raptura because the correct word is a catching away. If you look up that word catching away, it means raptura. It means uh, caught up. You know, one day the church is going to be caught up. You know, and, and when we do, you know, the Lord is going to uh, take the blinders off of Israel, but he's going to do it through seven years of tribulation. And the Bible calls it Jacob's trouble. That's what it's called. And it's to take the blinders off of them and to get them saved. Because right here we have the scripture that said, He shall save his people the Jewish people, Israel, from their sins. You know, they have rejected him for all these generations. But there's coming a time that the blinders are going to be removed and he's going to graft them back in and, and, and they're going to be saved. Anyway, uh, uh, the reason uh, they've been blinded, you know, the, the Lord has turned the salvation toward the Gentiles, which we are the Gentiles. And the Holy Ghost has been up on the Gentiles for a very long time, bringing conviction, you know, uh, to our sin and bringing the Gentiles into the uh, body of Christ. Now the Holy Ghost, he will soon start to lift off of the uh, Gentiles and he will turn back to the Jewish people and start to bring them uh, back under conviction. We see that going on now. You know, uh, that's why I made a statement in here last week. You know, the, the world is running out of time because I know because the church age is coming to a close. And as the church age comes to a, a close, you know, the Lord has trusted us, you know, with the closing hours of the church. We're in the closing hours of the church. We're in the, uh, you know, in the last day, so to speak. And we got to do all we can, you know, to build people's faith and to encourage them and to get them into the kingdom. And uh, I, I couldn't think of nothing better than to, to read these scriptures here to you tonight. But it said, uh, but now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, prophet Isaiah, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, 
which being interpreted is God with us. And people say, well, how can a virgin conceive? The Bible said well, with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. You see, when, when God stepped off his throne and came down uh, into Virgin Mary's womb, and uh, I talked about it the other night, and, and he began to swim in her ammonite fluid and attach himself to an umbilical cord and, and be there for 276 days, so to speak. But what surprised me is how he holds everything in order and how he's still in control of everything and how he's still giving orders to the angels to go and warn Joseph at different times to take Mary down to Egypt to take... Uh, uh, Mary into Nazareth and, and, and things like that. It, it, it boggles my mind. But with, uh, with God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible when it comes to God doing things. But said Joseph being uh, raised from his sleep, he did as the angel had bidden him and took him unto his wife. And he knew her not till he brought forth the firstborn son and called his name Jesus. I was listening to uh, uh, Kirk Cameron today and, and his wife, and they were talking about adoption. And this kind of shocked me because uh, uh, they said, you know, that adopt, they had adopted four kids. I didn't know they adopted four kids. But they were interviewing him, asked him, uh, why did they go through the adoption? And he said, well, adoption is the, is, is the center of God's heart. And I don't know if you know it or not, but me and my wife, we, we have also adopted. And he talked about how Joseph adopted Jesus. And uh, then he talked about how Pharaoh... Uh, wife adopted Moses and then if we go on and read in the Bible uh, we, we find out Esther was adopted and we find out uh, different other ones was adopted in the Bible so yeah it's the, you know, it's the center of, uh, of God's heart but what I like about this it talks about God with us and I just want to tell everybody out there tonight that you know Christmas season a lot of people that get depressed that get discouraged and things like that uh, I mean I have the family members uh, no longer uh, with them some of them be going through hard times and things like that uh, they may go to the cemetery and, and, and sit at a tombstone, you know, or whatever. But if we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and God is our Heavenly Father, God is with us. You know, that's, and it, that ought to be a very comforting thing that he's with us during this holiday season. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and the Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus you know, that whosoever would believe in them would not perish but have everlasting life. You know, we're going to give gifts to one another this Christmas, but, but don't forget that God gave his very best. He gave Jesus to us to save us from our sins and one day that we can uh, live with him in heaven for eternity. You know, and, uh, you know, the Bible said that every good gift and every perfect gift come down from the Father of lights where there is no variableness nor shadow of turning, you know. So this precious gift, you know, Jesus Christ coming into the world, you know, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, you know, came here to, to give us life, you know, to take our place on the cross, to die on the cross for our sin, to be, uh, to, uh, be buried in a borrowed tomb, and not only that, to, to be resurrected and to uh, uh, appear to so many people for 50 days, uh, 500 and more, and then uh, build their faith and then uh, go and, and return back to heaven. But uh, close out with this scripture, you know, over here in the book of Revelation, it says that, that, that Jesus Christ, he was the one who liveth. In other words, he came down and was born in the Virgin Mary's womb. That means he liveth. He was born and he said he was dead. In other words, he died on the cross and, and uh, he was uh, put in a borrowed tomb. But then it said he is alive forevermore. And I like that part. He's one that liveth and dead and behold, he's alive forevermore. And he has the keys of hell and the death. And uh, that ought to be so comforting to, to you that Jesus Christ is alive. He's on the throne. And uh, he's, uh, he's, 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 he's going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, God bless you. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. Hope this has uh, helped build uh, faith in people. And uh, we will see you uh, next Tuesday. God bless you.